We are here with Eric Coleman, uh, who is the author of Social Nomics. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Hola. Well, he speaks Spanish. Well, a little bit of Spanish, but he's he's good at Spanish. <laughs> All right, uh, can you tell us how did you start with social dynamics? Uh, how the idea came up? So I was mainly talking about search engine optimization and paid search. And when I saw, funny enough, MySpace way back several years ago now, I just thought that it would revolutionize how we do business and also how we live. Um, but at the time, when I started speaking about social media, the people, the crowd started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I actually wrote two columns on search, and I lost the column because I started talking a lot about social media, and they said, that's just for teenagers. So it's funny now to look back and see that that shift. And today we have different things that we struggle with, but we always got to remember and keep in mind these shifts are always happening. And in the moment, sometimes we can't see that opportunity. So we want to make sure that if you're out there pioneering, you're going to get pushback. So if you're not getting pushback, you should be concerned. Pushback's a good thing. So a lot of people get concerned when they're getting told, no, we're not doing that, or there's a hurdle, or put, people are pushing back. But that means that you're pioneering. That's you're changing what's happening. Galileo, when he said the world's round, it's not flat. It's not like everyone embraced him with open arms and abrazos. No, it was very difficult for, for him. So, so that's what I recommend to all of you guys out there. And uh, if you get a chance, I have a new book called Digital Leader. And so that's all about how you can, five simple keys to having success in the digital decades ahead for you individually. All right. Um, I think there's uh, just a few people who haven't seen your videos or used them for uh, lectures or classes, like me, teaching. <laughs> uh, how did you come with uh, making the, the whole book into video? Uh, where did you get the, the numbers and the facts? So for the social media revolution videos, first of all, I was using another video, which was by Carl Hirsch, which was great. And that was just a video about change. Mm -hmm. And so I got the idea from him that, that I go, wow, this is a great video. And everyone loved that video. But it wasn't talking specifically about social media. So I go, wouldn't it be great if we had a video about social media? And then so I did the hard work of researching the data. And while I was doing that, I realized, okay, this is why a video hasn't been made, because it's a fair amount of work to collect 40 points of data and then try to put it in a storytelling, compelling process. And so, fortunately, I put that together so that I could use it at my speeches, knowing that hopefully some other people, whether it was you teaching classes or whether it was someone trying to convince their CEO that they needed to do social media, is that I was hopeful that that tool, a four-minute video, would help. Um, and fortunately, it looks like it has for a lot of people, so that's really rewarding for me. Good. Do you know what are the most uh, active tracks of the industry using social media tools? The most. So the companies, the vertical markets that use social media the most, it's, it's just like most things digitally. It always starts with travel first, and then, then, then the restaurants, and more the consumer-facing products. Uh, but then also now, obviously, everyone's gravitating. So now more B2B companies actually use it than B2C companies. And a lot of people lose sight of the fact that there's a whole new industry called C2C, which is c consumer to consumer. And so that's what we talk about word of mouth on digital steroids, is that's the new era, is that C to C capability, which a lot of people at IBM today were talking about, and IBM's developing tools so that allows us as companies to be able to make sense of all this big data and to be able to predict and act on that data. Probably this is going to be a big spoiler for your new book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how? What, what are the five uh, points you you talk about in your new book? Yeah, so the new book's Digital Leader, it's already out in the marketplace, so you can order it on Amazon or on your digital e-readers if you have an iPad or a Kindle or a Nook. And the five steps are really simple. We all need to simplify because we've got way too much email coming at us. We've got way too much posts, tweets. And so it really digs into research about why multitasking is actually a bad thing. And I, I can say that because I'm a recovering multitasker. I used to think, oh my gosh, I can multitask. That's great. I'm so good at multitasking. What I discovered through the research is it, it's a bad thing. It actually burns you out. It makes you less productive. So the book gives you tactical tips like that. But at the end of the day, it's the five simple things spell out the word in English, stamp. 
because we're all leaving our own stamp on this world. And simplify, be true to yourself, your passions. A, you need to take action. Because a lot of companies and people I talk to, they go, I'm going to do that when I get this. Well, no, you need to act now. You need to fail forward, you need to fail fast, and you need to fail better. And then M is for math. You need to have a plan. I want you to act, but you can't just show up to work without a plan. If you showed up to work without a plan, you wouldn't be showered, you wouldn't have brushed your teeth. And so, and last but not least, the P is for people. Success doesn't happen alone, and so you need to surround yourself with great people, both offline and also digitally. So that's through tools like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, is you need to network before you need your network. Mm -hmm. Meaning most of us reach out to people when we need a job. But that's the worst time that to, to utilize your network. You need to develop that network ahead of time so that when you do need a job, you've been in constant contact with those people. All right, uh, something I like uh, from your presentation uh, some minutes before uh, was the digital shadow uh, plus the digital footprint gives you the digital um, legacy. legacy. Yeah. Can, can you elaborate a bit more of it? Yeah, no, it's a great question, and it's kind of what I just talked about in terms of the new book, Digital Leader, in terms of your stamp on life or your digital legacy. We now all have digital legacies, and those are comprised of our digital footprint. That's anything that you upload about yourself, and it's also more importantly comprised of that digital shadow. That's what others upload about you. So if you're an abuela, and you're out singing your heart out at karaoke, and your granddaughter posts that video on YouTube, that's part of your digital shadow. And together they make that digital legacy. And the whole book was really based on people always being concerned about three things. When I was talking about social socionomics around the world, whether you are a prime minister, whether you're a school teacher, or whether you're a CEO, they all wanted to know, how do I lead my life better in this crazy digital world? It's too complicated. Second, once I lead myself, how do I lead others? How do I lead others both offline and also digitally? And then third, what's my legacy? So it's life, leadership, and legacy. Those are the three things that most people are concerned about. And that's why I try to give research and practical tools in the book to say, here's how you change your life today, and oh, by the way, 200 years from now, it's gonna have a positive impact on your legacy for your great-grandkids and your your, your great-great-grandkids. Mm -hmm. Something I liked also was uh, the advice you gave. Uh, live your digital life like your mom is watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we didn't ask for this, but we now live in a fully transparent world, mm -hmm. and so uh, you have to live as if your mother's watching you. And, there's some downside to that, but net net, that's a positive thing for the entire world, mm -hmm. both for companies and for individuals. But it's a new day and age in a fully transparent world. It's something everyone's adjusting to. Um, and just when I think everyone understands that, you see someone goes off and does something on Twitter or does something on Facebook, and you say, oh my gosh, I thought everyone had learned not to do that. But it's, it's a continual learning process for all of us because we lived one way for the last couple thousand years and now it's changed overnight. All right, well, Eric, thank you very much. Uh, man, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias a todos and, and ciao.